Korea. Mud. Filth. Coal. Bullets. That was the one that got me. Got a few other guys, too. A couple of them could still walk. Not me. I'm not real sure what happened next. I was out like a light. They tell me I got a helicopter ride on a landing ski. Sorry I wasn't awake to enjoy it. Always wanted a ride in one of those things. Anyway, they got me back quite a ways from the fighting. Gave me another ride in a cozy ambulance. I'm just as glad I was out cold for that next stop. They took me out of the ambulance and lugged me into a field hospital. Not exactly a homey place, but darn good, they tell me, for so close to the shooting. They carried me in, and then everybody hung around while inside, the doctor looked at the hole in my leg and made up his mind whether I was in good enough shape to be moved some more. Was I or wasn't I? I was. So away we went again, back in the good old ambulance. It wasn't a limousine, but something in my unconscious mind, and I do mean unconscious, told me it was made in the U.S. And friend, that counts. I was lying on my back looking at the sky when it came around, and I knew I was in a boat. That's a strange feeling for a guy who last remembers running somewhere with a rifle. Somebody was hooking lines on my sack. And then, presto, magic carpet. It came to me right then. White ship, hospital ship, good old Navy. And I knew exactly why I was there. My leg wasn't kidding a bit. I didn't feel good, understand? But I loved everybody right then. Good old Navy. Good old USA. Beds. No kidding. Real for sure sacks. Mattresses. Everything clean as a pin. What a deal for a guy who's just beginning to figure out where he might have been. Sheets. Man, yes. You don't know how good a couple of white sheets look until you try sleeping in a soggy uniform. You've been in the mud and cold. You're hit. Things are plenty black. And then, when you get a private sack, nurses to look after you, the idea begins to soak in, if it hasn't already, what kind of a life we're fighting for. Young doctor looked me over. Nice guy. Seemed to know the score, thorough. He looked all scrubbed up, fresh. Found out later he hadn't had any shut-eye for 48 hours. Neither had anybody else on the ship. Business was a little too good. He gave me some kind of intravenous injection. I guess I was a little worse off than I thought. And the nurse got squared away on the statistics. Name, rate, serial number, favorite newspaper, you know. And off we went to take some x-rays. This ship has got everything. Matter of fact, you generally forget it's a ship. You forget you're not in the States in a hospital, a darn good hospital. It's a place where everybody knows his job. Those doctors and nurses and corpsmen have got to know what they're up to. I never did take a very good picture. The X-ray people on that ship didn't mind. Their business was good too. You see, war kind of boils down to everybody seeing how many little pieces of metal bullets, shrapnel, you can stick in the other guy. And when you happen to be the other guy, it takes a good x-ray to show what's what. Anyway, I understand that little snapshot of my leg was a honey. A nice hunk of shrapnel. They call in a bunch of doctors to consult on what to do about it. They were going from operation to operation, not getting much sleep either. 
But nothing goes off half-baked, regardless of how heavy the traffic gets. You're in good hands, mister. Good hands. Mind you, all this fancy handling, this good old American hospitality goes on just a stone's throw from the enemy. Only, they throw worse stuff than stones. Getting hit and patched up the way I was is just about as convenient as breaking your leg on the front steps of a hospital. They don't miss a trick. Before they hauled me off to the operating room, they type my blood again. I'm garden variety. Good old type O. But they've got all flavors on board. Somewhere in the US, there's a guy, maybe it was a woman, I'd like to thank for donating the blood they broke out of the refrigerator for me. I'm still alive. Do you know what that little blood pressure needle's supposed to do? I don't. There were a lot of things I didn't know. But I did understand that quite a few people were doing their best to patch me up. And among them, they had all kinds of training, skill. They were good. They knew what they were doing. And like I say, they were on my side. Good feeling. Did you ever see a doctor wash his hands? I watched them for a few seconds while the anesthetic was sneaking up on me. They wash and wash and wash and wash. I was out like a light again, and they went to work on me. This part I don't know anything about, but they must have done a good job. Next thing I remember, I was right back where I started. Just as if nothing had happened. Except, of course, no shrapnel. I told the doc when he came in, look doc, leg's fine. I'm hungry. I'm a starving man. What's for dinner? The guy in the next sack to me was eating. I might say like a horse. Good, huh? Yeah, yeah. I hope you choke. I tried the music. Tea for two. But heck, I wanted a side of beef for one. Chaplin dropped in. I said, look, Chaplin, how are your contacts in the galley? The physical man needs nourishment. I figured I'd talk to the right guy. But actually, it was a doc who okayed me for chow. Soup, salad, steak, steak. Let's turn this around. Then, what do you know? I was walking stiff. Brother, that leg was stiff at first. But they got a fancy rig that knocks the stiffness out in a hurry. It's a whirlpool business. Anyway, it put me in shape to walk through the soda fountain lineup. Would I ever have guessed the time I got hit that I'd soon be wolfing down ice cream? I would not. That old ship's got everything. What do you want? A new pair of specs? Grind them while you wait. They've got a real optical shop. Look around your hometown and you won't find a better one. And this one floats. And they've got a pharmacy, a drugstore. It's just as complete as the one in your neighborhood. Oh, they haven't got any electric toasters or beach balls. Just drugs. Besides that, they've got a big laboratory. There's nothing a lab in the States can do that can't be done right there. The thing they sterilize the towels in is so big, you could shove maybe six North Koreans in it, which wouldn't be a bad idea. And they've got dentists, too. While I was getting my strength back, the dentist fixed me up with a new tooth to replace the one I carelessly lost when I got hit. By the time they wrote me off as fully recovered, I knew that ship pretty well. And the more I knew, the more people there were I wanted to say thanks to. The nurses, the doctors, the whole crew. Tough war, believe me. It gives you a lot of confidence, a lot of it. When you go back to fighting, to know that people like that are standing by to help you 24 hours a day. I'd like to thank that bunch of hospital corpsmen whose names I don't know, who keep sticking their necks out to save a lot of guys whose names they don't know. 
I'd like to thank all the technicians. That's no eight to five job they've got. I am as good as new now. The shape I was in when I came aboard that ship, if I had been in somebody else's Marine Corps, I'd never have made it. Yes, sir. The U.S. takes care of its own. Thanks, Navy, for that floating hospital. That big, clean, white, beautiful hunk of America.